and on mission this morning. Our focus is on persons living with disability. As we mark International Day for Persons Living with Disability, we're having a conversation on a discussion known as the future is accessible. Now, you know that as a people, in 2006, when we passed a law that said that you know every building, a public building in this country should be disability friendly, we gave a 10-year moratorium uh, within which this should be implemented. Now, it's past the 10 years because we are in 2019, 13 years down the line, and we're still facing that challenge. This morning, we're joined by Joshua Makubu, who is a disability advocate and member of the Ghana Fish Notice, uh, Disabled Advocacy Committee. It's good to have you join us again, Joshua. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Everything is going well. By his grace. Uh, okay. <laughs> great, 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 great. Today, we're talking about, uh, you know, living with disability, not the other one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, I mean, um, we're looking at, you know, uh, the future is accessible. And uh, I know for many of you, you've been on this campaign for a very long time. Uh, since 2000, the early 2000s, resulting in a passage of a law in 2006. But it's past the 10 years. Uh, are you pleased with how far we've gone in ensuring that, you know, the, uh, you're able to assess all public buildings and facilities? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, this year's um, this, uh, International Day of Persons with Disability will be mm-hmm. celebrated under the team, uh, promoting um, access and the uh, right of persons with disability mm-hmm. and their leaders. Then in Ghana, we are looking at how the sustainable development goals can be made inclusive of persons with disability, uh, renewing commitment and advocating for the support of stakeholders. Um, it's true we have an act uh, that has been passed. And I was telling somebody that there were three thematic areas I was so much impressed with as far as the act was concerned, accessibility, education, and employment. But I can tell you without any little doubt in my mind that uh, that act in 2016 and now is as if uh, 2006 and now it's as if there was no act at all. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, because act, when uh, it comes 715 you said there's no act at all. Yeah, because when it comes to education, what has been enshrined in the act mm. is not something that has been brought to bear for persons with disability to benefit. When it comes to employment, no steps have been taken in that direction. It's only on accessibility that at least the general awareness has been created and you can see, especially on government side, pockets of uh, structures here and there that have been made accessible. But majority of them are still not accessible. You were even talking about structures that were in place before 2006. Uh, that we were given 10 years. Yeah. But just look at structures that have been put up mm. after the act, and they are also still not accessible. Uh, if we are talking about structures, we are not talking about ordinary structures, hospital buildings, school buildings, and, 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 and ministries, uh, departments, and agencies mm. that are made from the taxes that are collected from what? All citizens, including persons with disability. Yet, Persons with disability cannot access those structures. Mm. Uh, it's very appalling. Mm. As, as, as but, 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 but I know you've been dealing with government, you've been dealing with the implementation, uh, the implementing agencies. What is the reason? What is the concern? How come we've not been able to uh, you know, get this implemented uh, all this while? <laughs> when it comes to engagement with uh, the implementing partners and government, mm. I must confess we've had uh, a very large number of uh, engagement with them. And you go there, you are accepted, and then promises are made, but you go away and you come back to meet the same situation. And, 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 and sometimes when they talk, you realize that the concept of disability is still something that uh, they are not getting it. If I come to ask you to make uh, your building accessible, don't take it as if you are going to do me a favor. It's a right I am asking for. Mm. So I was thinking, that can we move a step further to criminalize uh, inaccessibility? If you put up a building and it's not accessible, it should be seen as what? A criminal act, an offense. And, 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 and you should be prosecuted along those lines. 
maybe that is what will compel people. But after the advocacy, the diplomacy, we have used all of them. But the Ghanaian society, as so now when we say it, people are quick to only look at government. What about the private individual who is putting up a school building? The mm -hmm. private individual who has the opportunity to put up a bank? The private individual who is putting up a hospital? They have also not made the environment accessible. Okay, so 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 in, in in that case, I mean, the future is definitely not accessible to you. That's no, the like. future is not accessible. And if if I am very sure that in the next ten years we'll be where we are now, as a country, and I have another way of of, of seeking to live elsewhere, maybe. I wouldn't hesitate to. Well, you'd want to live elsewhere because you were not, uh, you know, protecting you people. I mean, you're not fighting for your needs. Seriously, I don't, I don't see myself living in a Ghana where I can say it is safe if things will continue in this direction. Mm. We're yes. even talking about the fiscal inaccessibility. What of the attitudinal inaccessibility? What about the attitudinal that, inaccessibility? That one is even worse. Tell me more about that. Yeah, that, that one is where you meet people who are so full of who are prejudice. There are certain tax they will not give you the opportunity to perform because they think by your appearance, appearance you will not be able to, uh, to perform. Hmm. And that has to do with doing the job yourself, getting access to certain uh, uh, opportunities. And, and, and people think that, no, because you are a person with a disability, it's a no-go area. Let's look at political participation. The assembly elections are going on. Mm -hmm. How many persons with disability are able to come out and But you are into politics as well. Yeah, I'm into politics. And, but you, you, and, have, and you have a very big position. Yeah, but you are talking about, the, what do you call it, uh, one out of a thousand. You are original secretary of the I'm political I'm original party. secretary of the New Patriotic exactly. Party. Exactly. But let's look at it. The New Patriotic Party has 16 regional secretaries, mm -hmm. 275 for instance, secretaries. How many of them are persons with disabilities? Have they contested and they've not won? In some cases, that's what I'm telling you. If you are not fortunate, I am where I am today because of the current chief of staff mm. and the current general secretary. I got to interact with them. And I really know where they are. They still have some confidence in me that, look, this guy, when you go, you can make it. And I tell you, my first election that I contested, there was a meeting at the home of the... Uh, current chief of staff. And then a decision was taken that I should be called to go and contest the election. And I am telling you, if I didn't have that kind of encouragement, definitely I wouldn't go. Because when you even start in the immediate environment, people say, ah, how are you even going to do the campaign? If you want to talk, where will they mount pop it and talk? And how will you get people convinced how will, that you'll be able to do the work? Mm. But when I started, it gives a little It's not everybody who will be so privileged to meet such people. But if the environment had been freed up and then people's mind had been disabused, uh, yeah, the disabuse in people's mind had been rectified, definitely when a person with disability says he's going for elections, people will not. My first election I attempted to contest in my life was when I was in the protection. I want to contest the, uh, the SRC president. Mm -hmm. And when I said this, I said, ah, you too, how? Oh, he said that to you? Yes. And I just scratched that idea. I never contested the election. Mm -hmm. So I am telling you, not until I met people like this, it was going to be very difficult. Yeah, but now that your party is in government and they believe in this, maybe you should be pushing them more. Yeah, de definitely. We, we are pushing and then we are pushing. Those who are listening to us, who are listening to us. At least now I can talk about some four or five MPs who have come on board now. And per my conversation with them, they have said, oh, look, if we get somebody who is a person with disability and has the intention of contesting any election, whatever support they will need, we will also give you. And I received that support from some of them. Hmm. Somebody so like uh, uh, Honorable Patrick Buama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we never met before. My first time of meeting him, I was introduced to him by the Karachi East MP, Honorable Jato. Yeah. So, oh, this uh, Joshua, he's the Assistant Secretary for Tariq. He wants to contest for as a secretary, uh, secretary in OT region. I said, wow, that is a good idea. He's a powerful man. When the time is up, let me know. I'll do what I can do. And indeed, when the time came, he supported my campaign one over the other. Mm -hmm. So people are getting uh, involved. But the speed at which we the teams have moved 
uh, is what. So, so I mean, uh, in, in, in wrapping up, what do you want done for you now? Yeah, what I want done as far as persons with disabilities are concerned in Ghana, we should create spaces for them to take up leadership positions in government, in our churches, and even in our homes. Persons with disabilities should be given the opportunity to take our leadership positions. And in academics, the disability access, we should be giving free access to what? Education. But the mm. case is not like that. We understand, we'll go. But those institutions that are in charge of scholarships, when they are awarding scholarships, they should have it as part of their plan. If this year we are giving out 10 scholarships, at least two of them should be what? Persons with disabilities, unless no one applies. And when that happens, definitely we'll acquire the skills, we'll take up the leadership position, and we will try to mingle with... I, I serve on the National Youth Authority Board, and I can tell you today, if you get to National Youth Authority, the board members and the work, they have become so conscious of our accessibility that anything they want to do, accessibility is what comes to their mind first. Well, Joshua Makubu, thank you very, very much for joining us. Uh, he is a disability rights advocate joining us this morning on Mission here on Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. Uh, mission supported by uh, Star Ghana Foundation with funding from UK, EU and Adida. EU and Adida.